Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else that crosses our fancy. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everyone watching us live on Twitch. How's it going? We got quite a bit to get into this week, up to including... Audacity drama. Yeah, and it's the gift that just won't stew Here fill. we go again. <laughs> it's a whole month and a half. Yeah. <laughs> just audacity. The, oh, the audacity. Yeah. <laughs> we got a uh, couple other things. Um, the open source Discord, and that's going to be interesting. And the kernel has done a thing that has me very interested. But let's play a little game. Figure out what's been going on in our lives. Because speaking of things that just won't stew fill, I ordered a hundred dollars worth of computer fans, to which, like, man, I bet that's like a big box of computer fans, Noctua fans. Uh-huh. Oh, two of them too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Radically different uh, mind images there when you're like, oh, knock, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So I think those might be showing up today. I am tr- I am not chasing the silence dragon in the studio just because it, it is an extremely hostile environment with these, the amount of PCs I have in here. But I am trying to bring the noise floor down by a few dB. Also, I finally got everything wrapped up on the everything you ever wanted to know about the Mark of the Unicorn 828 MK3, but we're too intelligent to ask. I got that video done. So I will have that up for patrons. If you've been curious, you've been thinking about like, hey, I want one of these interfaces. Uh, how does it work on Linux? What say you, Google? Shrug emoji? Well, we're going to try <laughs> to fix that. So uh, what's new with you, Jill? You went to Disneyland. I saw you were posting yeah, pictures sure in Discord. Did. Then you were playing with fireworks being dangerous. Yes, <laughs> I was. So <laughs> Steve and I had a great time. And I even got him to go on the Grizzly River Run a rapids ride that's the first time he'd ever been on on a ride like that and he loved it is he <laughs> scared was... of grizzlies or what no he's just he he's not big on a lot of the rides but he, he'll go on disneyland rides so he's been been trying new ones with me it's great <laughs> he won't is go on spinny rides when it, it goes uh all the way down um big slope you then get wet at the bottom is yes, it one of them? it's a big, yes. it's, it's the big round, <laughs> classic big round raft. But this is okay. actually kind of the best one in the world because the theming is incredible. It's a longer than average ride and you get really wet. <laughs> so. Okay. You know what? I'll stick with showers, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> you and Jordan finished up a thing yesterday with itsy bitsy tight adorable dragons in this video game. Aww. <laughs> Yes, uh, th- there was already a couple of dragons uh, a few episodes ago uh, in chapter three. But yeah, there were two more dragons before the end because we actually beat uh, Neverwinter Nights. Uh, I started about uh, 15 episodes ago and um, yeah, it's over now. <laughs> the original campaign is anyway. And a big, big thank you again to Jordan for actually streaming the uh, past couple of ones. Since uh, he's got the necessary jack setup to have two people on without having to worry about it too much. So, <laughs> I mean, the afternoon mm-hmm. I spent making you guys not sound like it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that first one was rough. <laughs> yeah. <Aww>. <laughs> Very <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> it, it wasn't too bad you, for that last playthrough. You guys did good. And I, I had to yeah. wait, though, because I'm very unfamiliar with Neverwinter Nights intentionally. I don't know how much noise did I saw a meteor or something. Some spell came down and smashed the ground and there was no audio. Uh huh. So I typed <laughs> in Twitch I'm like, wait, like, let's see if we can get this in in under five minutes. These kids were having too much fun. They weren't having any of that. <laughs> we were talking D and D. They were nerding out hard. There was no chance. Of <laughs> <in the> chat. <laughs> <laughs> so so I brought out the bat signal. I'm like, okay, I'll just type this too. This is one good use of our Google group chat of 10 years. Yeah, when the <laughs> Hangouts <laughs> thing Kingdom goes on, like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's really how you get it. their attention, Ben. Uh, I, I try not to do that because I know no one has the foresight to mute that. <laughs> so I yeah. know we're going to be interrupting the stream, but it's better than having an entire hour long with no background audio. 
Yeah, yes. the, the, the game Mario was muted because Jordan uh, was waiting before we started, and then he forgot to turn it back on. Mm. So <laughs> the reason I'm bringing up audio is the audacity. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, audacity is now a possible. It is now. Wow, I read that right. Audacity is now a possible spyware. One full spyware or only half a spyware? I don't know. Yes. Remove it <laughs> ASAP. Um, and th- this is all over the privacy notice, which, you know, the, like, hey, you know, upcoming Audacity releases, uh, we're going to get IP address, user agent. Okay, so it's like a web browser or man. Uh, if web browsers only collected that, would be okay. Oh. <laughs> to be mm-hmm. fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so two things happened. That that I that really got my attention. One, you know, the privacy hobbyists like who've never opened Audacity before, doing their running around. Oh my God, pink routine, which <laughs> it's adorable. It is, and um, mm. everyone clamoring for a fork. To which I'll remind you. Let's just go ahead and just be real about this. Let's just cut the um, panic out of this and just look at it for what it is. As with any project, you know, a fork of Audacity without the backing of a core developer has zero viability. It's like if that manages to work, because we were talking a few weeks back, mm. like four or six core developers, and they're kind of aging out. Mm-hmm. No one stepped up. Um, like our new guy's yeah. 40. Keep <laughs> that in mind. Now, here's why I don't think anybody should panic. Um mm-hmm. No distro maintainers are going to like let this pass. You know, this is not going to be included in, well, I can think maybe one distro, but I'm not going to throw them under the bus. All the networking features that Iconical. the maintainers <laughs> of Audacity <laughs> yes. have added can be disabled in the build system through the appropriate CMake variables. This is not like ninja stuff that's like creeped in and hiding anywhere. This is very easy to disable. And, you know, the, that's going to make your binaries. They're not going to contain any code, provide any data, crash reports, update checking, or anything. Has this stopped everyone from blowing this out of proportion? Nay. Not even a little bit. But mm-hmm. it's not like Debian is ever going to um, ship Audacity with any type of telemetry enabled. Again, I can't say for any other distribution, but I don't see that being an issue. But here's some things I want to really roll this out. Um, my first thought was because they, they've not been doing a good job. Muse group has not been doing a good job with this at all. No. no. And bad it, communication. <laughs> it's communications is doing a lot of dumbs. And yeah. I, I think it's a inexperience dealing with a larger open source project. Like, Whoa. Oh, <laughs> we can, hmm. all the eyes are on you right now. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Having to dial back some of the PR speak. Worst case scenario for me, I can only speak for me. For you, you got to do you. Is is everything I've used Audacity for over the last decade, doing the shows that we make, I I could do it with the 10 year old version. It's because that's what I was thinking about. Like, what's really changed in the last decade (laughs) in Audacity? Not much. And, um, that's going to be your worst case scenario is just hold on to the version that you have. And mm-hmm. I don't know, but you know, that Pedro, that's not going to let you get outraged on the internet. I'm not outraged. I, uh, I can see <laughs> why people see are. The though. Rage. He's vibrating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to be my usual, uh, nitpicky and, uh, oh, confrontational. Self. I'll go do something else. <laughs> But yeah, no, timing is very much the crux of the blowback for this one because uh, there was a CLA that was contentious at best. Um, show, uh, <clears throat> poop show at worst. Uh, they got a... <laughs> that one slipped out. Uh, Don't worry, I'm going to send you the audio and let you edit it. Then send it back to me. <laughs> Might take a while, though. Uh, I'm patient. But yeah, the... Uh, there was a CLA and then there was the, the whole, yeah, we're just going to start collecting stuff right now without, uh, you know, 
telling anyone that that was the case, just introducing the change, and then making an out-of-branch commit uh, to remove that change, hoping no one would notice. Everyone noticed. Again, all eyes are on you. Uh, so, and then there was this, because the original privacy note, well, it outright contradicted the clarification mm-hmm. that was later posted on uh, GitHub by, uh, who was his name? Uh, worked in theory, or Tentacruel. Uh, so, yeah, it is, it, it, there's been a, a resonance cascade of uh, screw-ups um, and poorly handled situations because, let's be honest, it, it hasn't reflected very good. So, yeah, this is minimal after all the edits and everything else. This is clearly a minimal thing because, yeah, it's your IP address and your operating system. Neat. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just poor timing. Very, very poor timing. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a roller coaster ride and actually reminds me a lot of what's been what had been going on with purism <laughs> getting their phone out. <laughs> but you know, it was bad communication, uh yeah, saying one thing and then saying another. Uh and you know, honestly, this is is telemetry that many open source projects have been gathering for years, like Canonical with Ubuntu. Um, they just, they weren't very, you know, they weren't honest about it. I guess that's the good word. I get it. (laughs) That's a business thing. You know, don't tell people everything. Otherwise no one will want to use your thing. That's why, that's why this is happening. Yeah. (laughs) But they put it out there at this point. It's out there. You can do the shrug emoji. My favorite thing. I'm not defending Mupus group or anybody like that because I, Stated before, I can take or leave Audacity. I use Audacity genuinely to chop ins off audio blocks. Maybe I will use it to run an Nyquist script, but that's it. I use an audio editor to edit audio. <laughs> and that's not what Audacity is. I'm sorry. Uh, but <laughs> when it comes to the topic of tracking, you need to think about this. Uh, we, we do a, a show on Saturday. You might have heard of it called Linux Gamecast. We play a lot of video games. A engine we use um, or make use of or reap the rewards of is Unity. Pedro, could you explain to the lovely people how much tracking is enabled by default in Unity? Oh. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Like literally Accurate. enabled out of the box. <laughs> Accurate. Opt-in. So, But I get it. I get it. If you don't want your IP address or anything... That, That's well within your rights. What I'm saying on Linux, at least, I don't think you're going to be ever. You're never really going to have to worry about that. And if you do, there will absolutely be at least a Mm -hmm. a build available for your distribution. That's going to have that disabled because no distribution wants to deal with this. (laughs) No, you know, (laughs) unless they're getting a cut of it too. (laughs) I don't think there's. it's, uh, It's interesting to use. So, yeah. Or they can just include the previous version <laughs> before, before. Again, all they could probably ends. include a 10 year old version and no one would notice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing, one thing you might notice is um, your retro gaming PC can no longer play Netflix. Uh, Effectively. Yes. And everything else that requires Widevine because Google pulled the plug. Uh, it is, uh, speaking of a really, really terrible and. Uh, very, very funny um, <laughs> article titles tonight. Uh, Netflix not working on 32-bit Linux. Blame it on Google. Well, at least it's accurate, this one. And uh, yeah, it is. Google uh, seemed to have pulled the plug on 32-bit uh, support for Widevine. And if you go check, say, um, Firefox's support page, uh, scroll all the way down, there's uh, x64 Linux. Uh, Windows Vista and higher, Mac OS uh, 10, 11 and higher. Yeah, 32-bit Linux, not supported anymore. So, yeah. Pedro, what are you worried about? I'll just use an open source solution. There isn't one. Oh. That, that, that's the yeah. thing. This is Widevine. That's it's the uh, It's not open source. It, it is very much a proprietary Google thing, and I'm guessing that's how they've made it as uh, tantalizing for people like Netflix, people like Amazon, people like just about every content distributor out there. Ooh, so instead of playing chips on the CPU or the uh, GPU, we can actually play them on 
the trusted platform thing uh, th that comes built into the CPU. Oh, let's do that. And yeah, no more support for that on um, on 32-bit Linux. Hmm. I, I do wonder, that, because if you think of how many old TVs have some manner of Linux-based operating system before they all shifted to Android... How's that going to go? I don't know, yeah. considering most of them are running like <laughs> QNX variants. Eh, okay. <laughs> well, WebOS is Linux based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is completely different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. At the end of the day, you're going to have, um, it's going to be more challenging to find a 32 bit machine than it would be a 64 at this point. Uh, remember the Debian uh, contributor that said that uh, there are more people using 32-bit Debian out there than there are using any of the non-x86 architectures combined. Yeah. Kind Still of puts that in perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck getting those PCs from the most people, man. I'm, I said, find them. <laughs> I didn't say in use. <laughs> oh, just finding one for yourself. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Th this is to my point you're gonna have to replace it at some point and the longer that goes the harder it's going to be i know you really really feel that the audio and visual fidelity is so much smoother through traditional 32-bit registers versus 64 you know I, i'm <laughs> i'm trying to come up with some excuse because somebody's gonna fight me on this I'm like no, you need, thirty-two bits better because bzz, spins wheels. See there is something like. to be said about running, uh, like a uh, like an old game on an age-appropriate bit of hardware. That's how yes. entire yes, YouTube yes. channels like LGR. Have, yes, uh, exactly, Pedro. That was, <laughs> if you run a YouTube channel, there is something to be said for that. Yes. <laughs> Outside of that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, with that, Netflix, I don't watch Netflix on anything other than mobile device. You know, you can watch Netflix on a $50 mobile, like an Amazon tablet, no problem. Cast it to a TV if you somehow manage to find a TV that doesn't have Netflix built into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, womp womp. So sad. Foss Dis Aww. Wait, no. 32? No. Foss Discord. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a new Discord alternative project in the works called Bosscord, and it is an open source, self hostable chat, voice, and video platform similar to Slack, Rocket Chat, and is supposed to be Discord compatible, meaning it, it better it, be it with does, that logo. Yeah, that's that, that's an that issue. That might be changing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does use the open source CSS framework in the style of Discord, which is really cool. And I actually love Matrix and use it for work on a daily basis. And it's a really good open source, you know, competitor to uh, Discord. But it would be nice to have another decentralized and open Discord-like option out there because I love Discord so much. <laughs> it's like my one of my favorite platforms, but it's not open. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be, yeah, it would just be really, really nice to have an open version of Discord. And so Foscord is actually looking for project contributors as well as financial cr contributions via Open Collective. So go support them. I really want this to be a thing. It looks very promising. Yes, and if you are going to contribute some code, make it your first thing to come up with a different logo. Because yeah. Discord going to sue somebody. <laughs> yeah. Change that logo very quickly. Pedro, this, this is a very, very easy thing to fix. We can give it a mustache. At least it just... A mustache that was a, in a different color. I still think replacing the controller with like a top hat, like a skew no, or something. No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> so that's supposed to be. Why, why don't we do like a nice, uh, uh, happy, fun logo of the like uh, Sega fishing controller? Yeah, or <laughs> an 8 bit new. <laughs> so a different controller. Or at least move the little pips for the analog sticks like. Askew, so it's not obvious that that is just the Discord logo that you rounded the corners off of. 
please? <laughs> because this looks really interesting. At first, I started reading this like, oh, yeah, no, good luck with that. But then I was like, oh, wait a second. Self-hostable, Discord compatible. That means you could technically host your own thing and then go, hey, look, this is a Discord server. And everyone that's on Discord could just join your self-hosted thing. That sounds amazing. That sounds really useful. Yes. Change the logo. <laughs> Yesterday. Two things I'm worried about that. Um, so first, I like the idea. I haven't had a chance to look at it, but when I, when I was reading through the comments, when I ran across this on Reddit, uh, everyone's like, yeah, it looks really, really, really similar to Discord, which is a good thing. Uh, no problem there. But when we run into that API compatibility, <laughs> could be that arms race. Could be flipping the bit. Oh, look, it doesn't work today. Well, maybe they'll get a fix out yeah. this afternoon. <laughs> a lot of people do not want to live with that static in their life. But hey, you know, uh, being able to do your own Discord instance, speaking companies mining your data. Mm -hmm. Hi, I Google. mean, they would probably, if you're doing that, Discord would probably still mine everything that's said on chat that's passed to their service. Yeah. So. Yeah, <laughs> true. I don't know. Okay, in the pre-show we were talking about, I, I am intentionally ignorant <laughs> about laptops, and uh, we were talking about touchscreen support and gestures. Who has a gesture? Ta oh, right, Grandpa. Laptops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, laptops, tablets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, touchpads. And there are those people that really like the um, dedicated trackpads I, I i don't understand it either but on laptops it makes sense if you are ever caught in a situation where you do need that laptop functionality it comes in useful but this this is not just for that this actually includes a great deal of many things it's not wayland it's x xorg server version 21099.1 thank you very much Arthurian, for the uh, heads up on this uh, yeah. it's, yeah, version 1.20 is out now and it's, yeah, it's got X input 2.4 support, which adds, uh, adds, uh, touchpad gestures, which as Ven was hinting at, very important. Now you don't need all of the extra software trickery to interpret the, um, touchpad gestures and then pass that input off to X. You can just do it natively directly from X. That's nice. That's very nice. It's only been, what, 20 years in the making? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> well, it, this is actually, this is a really big deal because it's been three years since the version 1.20 release of X. Mm -hmm. So this this is this is a big deal. And it's, it's good to see, you know, more work being done, even though, you know, Wayland is coming a, becoming a thing. We still need X. And um, they've done a lot of improvements to X Wayland, despite putting out uh, separate X Wayland binaries. It, they're still making a lot of improve, improvements there to be compatible, which is awesome because we're going to you know need some legacy support. And there's also better Mison build system support so, so that... The 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 oh, build easy framework mode building is, for X. yeah is easy <laughs> to do and it, and it's really fast and efficient. I've been really impressed uh, with the Mason build system. Yeah, that, that's for the fancy people uh, that can't hang with laugh. <laughs> X gonna build it to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> so that's enough boring back end code stuff. Uh, we, we need to go Aww. to something more exciting, like. <laughs> More exciting for Ven. <laughs> we no. must go deeper. No, <laughs> this is all exciting for all of us. So there are this. This is really awesome. There are a lot of great sound and audio updates for the upcoming Linux kernel five point one four that will soon be out. And so there's some great features you know we can expect that are included in the Linux kernel five point one four release candidate one. And there have been lots of fixes and enhancements for USB audio devices, woohoo, which will improve latency on our mics, on our mic interfaces, and our audio mixers. Uh, for instance, the Scarlet 2 mixer has a bunch of fixes and enhancements, and that's one I know a lot of people use. 
and there's fixes for ozone. It's a YouTuber and, special. <laughs> yeah, YouTuber special. And the Denon devices. I I actually have an old uh, Denon mi- mixer that never worked quite well on Linux. So maybe it will now. And, you know, there's just been a lot more improvements to audio that Ven is going to go in more detail with. Because it's his jam. It's not my jam. It's <laughs> something I know about. So I'll speak to yeah. it. Check this out. <laughs> Two big things going on here, and both of them on my end are from a man tack, and that is the USB latency reduction. That's going to do what it says on the tin. You know, you don't have to really think too deep about that plugin. Slightly less latency. We're talking milliseconds, like a fraction of milliseconds, but it's still an improvement. Now, the big one, ladies and gentlemen, is the Firewire code refactoring and enhancement. Got to unpack that a little bit to understand it, because up until now, we basically we had two drivers, what we just did. If you had a FireWire device, you wouldn't be using FATA drivers or the ALSA drivers. And those could easily be broken down into two categories. FATA works, ALSA not so much with working. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's just reality. You know, while the ALSA drivers mm-hmm. worked, they were basically in a state of, you can play sound out of your $1,000 interface. Yay, you don't try to record anything with it. It'll be all knackered. So... The latest update is going to add, especially with like two devices that I have that I've been testing with Media Clock Recovery, which is going to help out with your DigiDesign 002, 003 series, um, basically on chipsets, I'm just giving you an idea. Pretty much the entire Motu range. And effectively, you're going to get plug and play support for those models, along with like Focusrite. And I got a rack of stuff back here that I've been testing with. You just plug it in, you're done. You know, also is going to see it. It's going to get configured and you're going to be good to go. Now, several other improvements have been made to just clean up the overall stability of the also FireWire stack, which is nice to see. Now, I've been providing feedback for the last few months on this and I can tell you it is working with my focus rides, my digis, my motos. And um, the reason you can get excited about this is people looking to, here's kind of how it's breaking down. Windows 11 is not going to have any support for FireWire whatsoever. Windows 10 has done everything in its ability not to support it. You can kind of hack into it. It's still a lot of Windows 7 boxes running in studios. Mac, Mac's like, yeah, we know we popularized it, but we got the Thunderbolts <laughs> now, the Thunderbirds. Just use that. and So you got these people. Audio hardware doesn't progress at the same breakneck speed as computer hardware. No, I'm like last year's laptop, like, ah, you're looking at a 10-year-old interface. I'll give you a good example. I just picked up this Moto 828MK3, and if you look at something like, oh, are you telling me that $200 interface is better than my, I don't know, what's a focus right, like a four-channel focus right, Scarlet, whatever, which is their budget line, by the way. Is it better? Yes. In what way? Yes. <laughs> Across the board, you're, you're talking about... Like, um, Moto makes cheap ones now, too. They got the M2, M4, uh, Behringer, you know, the UMC series, and uh, Focusrite, the Scarlet line. Those are cost-reduced, as cheap as they can make something and still make a small profit off of it. They're effectively sound cards that you can stab with an XLR cable. Um, what you can do with the FireWire stuff is, since people are dumping them, we're in, a, we're in that nice little lull right now where people don't, like, ah, there's nothing I can do. I can just put it on eBay and get rid of it. So you're getting seven, eight hundred, twelve hundred, fourteen hundred dollar interfaces for a hundred bucks. And yes, they are superior. They have better latency. They don't have the USB RNG latency, which every time you plug your interface in or cut your computer on, your latency is different with USB under Linux because reasons. Fantastic deals to be had. And this this is gonna clean that up. So if somebody's like, hey, do I get rid of my hardware? I'm like, no, just come over to Linux. You can do this. How do I do it? Well, now you Plug it in. You're pretty much done with it, especially once we see pipe wire uh, really get hold because that's going to be a good simplified front end to the also firewire stack to cut out all the jack stuff that, you know, I, I, I truly believe that pipe wire will reduce the friction for Windows users trying to figure out how to configure audio interfaces on Linux. I really mm-hmm. believe that. I hope that's the case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also Linux users. That is, 
that mm. is one chunky uh, bit of audio stuff for just the first RC1 of 514. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Huh? It's a big, big change. And if everything goes swimmingly, end users, you're not going to notice. It's just more stuff when you plug in, it's just going to work. And that, that is good. That, that's where uh, Linux still wins. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And we can take advantage of, yes, FireWire is an absolutely dead technology, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with the audio interfaces. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't want to say 100% of the time because there's going to be that one person that comes up. Something that you're going to end up getting, you know, that's eight years old, 10 years old, it's just going to wreck what you would get for like 200 bucks in a modern audio interface, which, I mean, they're, they're just cost reduced things that they're not good. They're noisy. They don't have any features. Like for 200 bucks, you know, I have 23 in, 18 out, a Xilinx FPGA processor to do my signal processing, audio routing, and effects and all that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So stuff yeah. like this <laughs> makes me very, very excited. <laughs> but let's talk about OBS Studio because we're going to talk about audio stuff. Let's talk about the video stuff. <laughs> Pedro, have you heard of NV Encode? <laughs> yes. Hmm. I, I have used it uh, for streaming uh, for a while, except for those games that were a bit more demanding on the GPU until you managed to point out to me that no, that's a different part of the GPU. My next question it's not the was, GPU at all. <laughs> have my futile attempts to explain <laughs> that, that dedicated Yes. Silicon. Streaming is just said to NVA with all of the optimizations that uh, FX Stream suggests to try and get the best possible quality. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. Uh, OBS NV Encode on Windows, years ago when Turing first came out, the, um, and we're talking about some of this NVIDIA only. Yes. Hello. Runaway NVIDIA commercial. Whatever. Isn't that right, Linus? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Look, we're done with that. <laughs> now, NV Encode, it's, it's just like a free bonus sort of for people who stream. And um, also when you're rendering videos, it's also interesting to have that along with compute. But on Windows, uh, NVIDIA did the back-end work to prevent, it. it's kind of like a zero-copy system where it's not copying everything all around the system, RAM back to CPU, back to video card. They cut out all the middlemen, and NVIDIA's like, hey, yeah, it's coming to Linux, you guys. Crickets, two years later. And that was uh, always called Jim Invening. And somebody got tired of waiting on NVIDIA, as people do. <laughs> or I. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. You know, the fallback NV encoder that is used on Linux copies the rendered frame back to system RAM, copies it again to an FFmpeg AV frame, makes the FFmpeg upload it back to the GPU, and it takes a lot of CPU time, especially in lower-end CPUs. This, in this case, was an i3-4370, which technically counts as a computer. Encoding the textures directly without copying system RAM solves this issue. Like, well, like, I've tested this, and even reading from this, decreased CPU usage uh, between 25 and 30 percent from 25 to 30 That's to very around good. 11. Yeah, it's excellent. Now, this is going to be the big stopper for now. It only supports ARGB currently with textures, and you're not going to be able to use NV12, which is what most people are going to have here set to NV12709. And but this is a big honking step in the right direction. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Definitely. Jill? And yeah, uh, Matthew in chat said, open GL freak. Yeah, that's the developer. And I thought what was cool is that he tested it on his older machine, an Intel Core i5 fourth gen processor with an NVIDIA GTX 1066 gig of RAM GPU running Arch Linux. And, you know, that's a very good place to, you know, test rendering, you know, on an older system. Uh, that's awesome. And in fact, Ven, on Monday, I tested Caden Live, um, their experimental NVENC um, render. I, I did a, um, a little video and uh, it, it came out pretty good. I was really impressed and the speed is there now. So, <laughs> And that is exactly the kind of situations where you want to test this, where you have a weak CPU or you're only leasing a single core from someone or you just happen to have something laying around that doesn't have a particularly powerful CPU and you want to offload as much of the encoding to the GPU yeah, as possible. Yeah, possible. Yeah. 
It's perfect. This is yeah, going to be please. a more efficient <laughs> way of doing it. I, I'm looking forward yeah. to this. And it's the right way. If you have an NVIDIA card, if you have a um, 10 series, 20 series, 30 series, that's yeah. what you should be using for streaming. Because, I mean, unless you're doing a dual PC setup, which isn't terribly hard to do, but people look at that and they just go, eh, that require me to lift a finger. <laughs> <laughs> This will be good for older render farms, too. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, this is only going to work with OBS, so. Yeah, it's the OBS one. But NVENC, it, there's a lot of development on NVENC, so this will trickle down for sure. <laughs> so if you like what we do, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast and help us out. We want to thank each and every one of you. It makes this possible commercial free, all the fun stuff that we're able to drop. And we try to give you a bunch of rewards in return for kicking us some coin each and every week up to and including we get an extra bonus show if you like what we do here we get a pre-pre super shows and we get a run together and we talk about what's going on what our plans are movie reviews all the off side b stuff if you like this show this is just the creamy middle center this is about a two hour long show it's a live stream now i make that available for everyone in podcast format if you need that extra background music to listen to it is there also video versions available for this show and what we do on Saturday, which that's a four hour block of insanity. It's pretty fun to watch. We invite you to come take a look at that as well. We also have a store. If you want to put some LGC yeah, merch, like merch all over your face, chest <laughs> and neck, we got you covered. We got shirts. We got more shirts. Did I mention we have shirts? Also shirts with long <laughs> sleeves. Ooh, what else? Oh, shirts with hoods. And hoods. Yes. <laughs> we even have stickers and I, I can confirm all the stickers works. And all the shirts managed to shirt very effectively. Oh, yeah. I still want someone to make a shirt out of the stickers. No, nah, that, that sounds like a horrible <laughs> idea. Thank you all for keeping us loud, live, independent, completely ad free. And speaking of like things tracking you, we host all of our podcast stuff. We don't have a third party that's like throwing your data to whoever knows whoever, man. Keep that in mind. But thanks for making that possible. Stick around for your name in the credits. Let's get in. Oh, we still have a patron to thank. Amber. We have Amber in chat. She's an executive producer hey. now. Awesome. And I've been enjoying talking well, to her. Thank you very she much, Amber. In, and since we're doing that, uh, <laughs> Linux Predator. Thank you for the two-month race up. That did not yeah. go noticed. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Yes. I don't Amber, know. I always have fun <laughs> each and every week. I'm like, let's go into the pie swing. Like, oh, but you forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to get him to speak up during that segment. So <laughs> let's get into a slice of pie. I don't know. That looks like an upside down pie. That's reverse pie. I wouldn't trust that. Pie. It's mirror pie. It's uh, the other pie. <laughs> also, I'd make comments on half those equations being incorrect, but we're not into that. All right. So installing mm -hmm. Linux into a 286 laptop. From Why would you want to do this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you want to have <laughs> your um, your old, really, really old laptop running a modern operating system. And we're not talking about like cut down version of Linux. No, 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 no. We're talking about using a Raspberry Pi as a co-processor for your old 286 laptop. It's, yeah, no, it's another one of those projects. And I love it. I actually do love the, it. The, this because reeks of Pedro level boredom project. Yeah. <laughs> that may very well happen. The, uh, yeah, no, it is, uh, the only thing that I would, uh, sort of raise an objection to is their use of the Pi zero. I would have gone with the Pi zero W because <laughs> then you can have Wi-Fi on a 286 laptop. Uh, on a then, it, then it wouldn't be authentic. It's a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to try. I really do. <laughs> yeah, Pedro, Pedro would. <laughs> so uh, using a Raspberry Pi will give you so many more options than running Elks or the embedded Linux kernel subset on a 286, which I do on a few of my 286 computers <laughs> to get, you know, online and all the good things. <laughs> but I remember the days of setting up the internet on DOS and configuring Ethernet controllers and then using my favorite GUI web browsers, Arachne and, and Dillo. <laughs> GUI, very slowly. 
<laughs> and then before that, links and e-links text browsers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear Flying Spaghetti so Monster, I would just job. like to take this moment this to thank great. you for making me impervious to nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's seriously the idea that you you could just remotely access the Raspberry Pi and then use the Pi itself on the uh, for the extra hipster cred, or you could just have the Pi as the coprocessor to handle some of the heavier stuff. Yeah. The, it, yeah, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think this is a great option and fun too, because you're still be able, able mm -hmm. to play with the classic screen on the 286. Yep. You know, whether it be a laptop. Oh or no, a we got to change that out for like an OLED 2K. <laughs> uh, I I think someone would actually send you a legitimate death threat if you cut into one in as good a condition <laughs> as that one is, if you cut into one to make room for the OLED display. Yeah. <laughs> and? <laughs> You'd get all of the bricks through the window. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to see the downside here. You're going to get to one in a minute. <laughs> I, I get to anger people and I get free bricks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what bricks cost? <laughs> It's not going to be a brand new brick, but. <laughs> well, you didn't tell me that, man. I thought you were promising <laughs> brand new bricks. <laughs> so beautiful, people. Uh, if things anger and enrage you online and you'd like to tell us about it, share your opinion, thoughts, hints, allegations, things better left unsaid, we'd love to hear it. And how do you go about that, Pedro? You can do that in a multitude of ways. You can absolutely just fling your old laptops through my window. Uh, I present you for like two seconds. Unicode uh, for brick. <laughs> uh, there isn't a category for brick, but there is a uh, there, category for LWDW. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where you can just pick LWDW. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. <laughs> and uh, we'll get your uh, bit of feedback, be it short, be it long. Just be careful with the URLs. Spam Golem doesn't like URLs, so yeah. Uh, just there's no trust story. me mode on the spam go. <laughs> no, if you get GitHub links and stuff like that, here's a safe thing. We're smart. We know how to Google and um, describe what you're talking about. We don't need like a bunch of links. And, put the name of uh, it. Yeah, what it does. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get back in touch. We'll start that conversation. We'll, we'll hang out, or you can just hammer on it, and it, it doesn't care. Spam golem doesn't sleep. It doesn't get tired. It's a machine. <laughs> it will win. Was that nice? Your mushy, trying? mushy human brain will need sleep at some point. Yeah. Well, I was trying to bring back the uh, Terminator <laughs> quote, but my brain's failing me at this point because it's got to roll the credits. Thanks for showing up, everyone. But we do have to get out of here. I need a pit of uh, molten metal to do the. <laughs> That's your excuse for everything. Oh, I'd do it if I only had a pit of molten metal. <laughs> Look, everyone's got to have their dreams, and the pit of molten Aww. metal is a big one for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Omegas and Artharon, our advisors, and Amber, our newest executive producers, and all our wonderful well, executive producers. Thank you very much, Amber. <laughs> you know what, Pedro? I'll get you a pit of mercury, if you, only if you promise to play in it. Um, can I drink it, though? Yeah, absolutely. It's child okay. safe. Then you have a deal. <laughs> Decaffeinated. <laughs> uh, then I don't want it. It's got to oh have gosh. all of the caffeine in it. <laughs> LWW 282. Wow. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. We will see you next week. <laughs>